What's poppin' everyone? So in light of the recent update to the Wi-Fi battle timer in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, allowing us to create games of a much longer duration, the possibility of joining another draft league had crossed my mind. Now my boy Joey, also known as PokeMMD, who is also known as the Doctor, which I do kinda need right now because I am sick probably with a very bad cold. He was joining a draft league and asked if I wanted to join the same one that he was joining. So of course you already know I jumped on the opportunity to bring back the Chim Chargers. To bring back Challenging Me was their first mistake and hopefully Lots more GG it's MVs. After you see my draft, please leave a comment and let me know what you think of my draft overall and what your favorite Pokemon I picked up this season is, I'd like to know. For all those who have seen my past draft league content before, you know what to expect. But for those that don't know what it's all about, it's basically a counter team style format. The rules of this league in particular are simple. There are a total of 12 of us in the league and so the drafting order is randomized. Each Pokemon in the draft is worth a certain number of points. We start off with 120 points and all of us pick anywhere between 9 to 11 Pokemon. One Pokemon at a time in a snake style draft order where it goes from person number 1 to 12 and then person number 12 picks again and it goes from 12 to 1 so it goes back and forth. Once you select a Pokemon for your team, nobody else can select that Pokemon so you have to make wise choices to take Pokemon you want or need at the right moment before it gets taken by somebody else. You also can only make one Pokemon your Terra Captain so now you have Terra Captains and you have to declare what Terra type they will be overall for the entirety of the draft. So you can choose two Terra types for that one Terra Captain. One of them has to be a stab move or stab typing and one of them has to be any type you want. It can be your stab, doesn't have to be though. Um, for example, the guy who picked Dragonite has Terra Flying and Terra Normal. And then once you draft a team, you face off against someone each week and have to try to counter team them because both of you know exactly what your draft is but not the six you'll be bringing. So you have to bring, bring the best six possible to each match. So with the draft order randomized, I became the third overall pick in the draft, which pretty much guaranteed me something nice and potentially broken. At this point, I asked myself the question, should I go a more standard broken route or the fun heat route? Like win or lose doesn't matter. I'm bringing heat. I'm drafting stuff that's going to be fun. So for my first Pokemon Scarlet and Violet draft, after not having played the format in like two and a half years, I decided to go the fun route and picked up a truly heat team which actually looks quite powerful too. Now the first two picks that went were Dragapult and Dragonite. I was primarily focused on trying to get new mons for this draft as well as you know Pokemon that I never used before. So essentially it felt like I was pick number one after those two went. Without further ado let us get into it. So my first pick of the draft I picked up Walking Wake. I had to do it. I had to pick up the brand new Pokemon because I want to have some fun and be the pioneer of Walking Wake in draft. I also made it my Terra Captain with Terra Water for Hydro's teams as well as Terra Fairy. I think Terra Fairy is a nice defensive typing as a dragon immunity which could come in handy in removing its weaknesses and gives it uh, some nice resistances as well. I mean its typing is incredible. Water Dragon I think is only weak to what like Dragon and Fairy I believe. And if you take a look at this Pokemon's stats it leaves a lot of room for creativity in running offensive or defensive sets as well. Um, solid speed tier overall with the potential for Protosynthesis boosts as it has some interesting setup moves as well that I may tap into. Not to give away too much of course, but yeah I'm excited to try out Walking Wake and see how it does in draft. Now for my second pick, I was surprised to see this Pokemon still around by the time it came back to me. And so I picked up Tinglu. This is definitely my favorite of the Chinese legendaries. I was super glad that I got it. Really great bulk overall. And the ability to set up multiple layers of hazards with ease. Cool move in Ruination to cut opposing Pokemon's HP by 50%, etc. You know, just a lot of fun things to do with this Pokemon. And I mean, it's not only a defensive Pokemon. I mean, if I were to use this thing offensively, it will sit like a tank and it will hit like a tank. Like a base 110 attack is nothing to mess around with. So I'm looking forward to this Pokemon and hopefully turning our opponents into Ting Losers. Not turning Ting Lu into a Ting Loser, turning our opponents into Ting Losers. Now for the third pick, I need to pick up something extremely crucial for the team. A very, very vital partner for Walking Wake because there was no guarantee that it would be around by the time it came back to me again. I got Torkoal so that I could activate Protosynthesis while also powering up Hydro Steam with its Drought ability. Torkoal can also Rapid Spin so it does provide some hazard control and um, some hazard support as well which is pretty unique. But I mean at this point in time Torkoal was picked to take Walking Wake to the highest level possible and I wanted to make sure that I had that option for um, my basically my featured signature Pokemon for the team, my very first Pokemon for the draft. Now for my fourth pick, I was initially going to get Slitherwing to have another Protosynthesis Mon and a strong fighting type. It ended up getting taken, however I landed on something far more sinister. 
I decided to get Iron Hands. I really like this Pokemon because just like Ting Lu, it is extremely bulky and hits extremely hard. Iron Hands also helps Walking Wake break through bulky waters, which I know either forces an opponent to switch out and take damage on another Pokemon, or it paves the way for spamming Hydra Steam more frequently. It can also slow Volt Switch into Walking Wake, so I find that to be pretty valuable as well. Great setup options too, with Sword Dance, Belly Drum, etc. Very surprised it made it four rounds, just like Ting Lu made it all the way back to me. I was surprised that this mod was still around by now. So the team so far is looking nice, but it could do with more hazard control support as Torkoal is not going to want to switch into Stealth Rocks to try to Rapid Spin and stuff like that. So for my fifth pick, I chose Hatterene. Magic Bounce is such a unique and amazing ability to bounce back hazards, status, and more. It deters all those things, which makes it a lot easier. So we don't need to be wasting time trying to remove hazards in, and instead you know, can be focusing on removing Pokemon from the other side. I do like the options that we have with you know, Nuzzle, Paralysis, Calm Mind, even Trick Room perhaps could be fun. Um, and I think it's a great Pokemon for the team to kind of provide good support. I mean Torkoal and, and, and Hatterene are, are just really good role support mons for the team and just to benefit Walking Wake and other things like that. Um, so after my first five picks, I was like, okay, what steel type can I get? Because I'm a big fan of Dragon Fairy Steel Cores in draft. And this was when I noticed, looking through the draft, literally all the good steel types were gone. They were all taken. However, one steel type that I noticed was available, fulfilled quite a few roles that my team needed. For my sixth pick, I went with Revavroom. I think it has a base 90 speed or so, so it definitely gives another speed level to the team. And aside from shift gear and being offensive, it can actually function pretty well defensively, has access to toxic spikes, parting shot, and other neat forms of utility. Definitely not the best steel type out there, but I think it's good for what I needed to do. And honestly, I don't even think I needed a steel type to begin with, but it's a grounded poison. So, you know, it, it, additionally, it absorbs toxic spikes, which is really, really nice. I think every team in draft some, needs something like that because Toxic Spikes is just a very dangerous uh, thing to have when your opponent does not have uh, a poison type Pokemon or, or, or a good one at that. And, you know, it's one of the newer Gen 9 Pokemon, which is always a plus because that was what I was prioritizing in this draft. Aside from, you know, more of the mandatory roles, I needed to, to fulfill Sun and Magic Bounce with Torkoal and Hatterene. Everything else I kind of wanted to be like sort of new, like new Pokemon and stuff like that. So Room really filled that role. And then, um, yeah, pick number seven. I got something that could be pretty fun in the sun. I got Brute Bonnet. I really wanted another Protosynthesis Paradox Pokemon, and I'm glad I was able to get another one. Brute Bonnet's a very strong priority user in well, by using Sucker Punch and stuff like that. And that is given a Protosynthesis boost behind a very powerful attack. It's just too nice. It's also pretty bulky as well. Although it is weak to U-turn, so I have to watch out for that. I have to be really careful. But it's a very dangerous Pokemon. And I did tell you I'm going to be going the fun heat route for this draft. So maybe, you know, who knows? Well, maybe I'll whip out the loaded dice for this Pokemon at some point. I really like the coverage this thing has. It also has access to like close combat and stuff too. To destroy steel types and stuff like that. Really cool um, Pokemon. I do like this for the priority though. Oh, and uh, and Spore. It can put stuff to sleep as well, which is always fun. And there is Sleep Claws though. I have to uh, watch out for... <laughs> accidentally putting more than one mon to sleep on a, on a Wi-Fi battle. But um, yeah, a lot of interesting sets I can think of with this thing. So yeah, my team is a little on the slower end, having to rely on, you know, protosynthesis from Walking Wake to outrun the metagame. Uh, but I do have some priority now and also a ground resistance, which my team needed. And for my eighth pick, I decided to get something on the faster side, just to kind of, you know, keep up with the speed a little bit. I got Mousehold. I think this Pokemon has a lot of tricks up its sleeve aside from the usual population bomb, which I feel can be prepared for in a sense with Rocky Helmet and stuff, but I mean it does force that prep to be taken into account, which can be kind of useful to know. And I mean it got things like Super Fang, Thunder Wave, of course Tidy Up to remove hazards and substitutes, fast U-turn, among other things. Um, not sure if I'm going to make any changes to my draft as I get more used to my team, but it's all trial and error to see how things go. I've not used the team yet, so we'll have to see how um, it goes, but I do like this pick a lot. I think this little guy is going to be fun. I'm sure by now some of y'all would have noticed, though, I have no ground immunity. I mean, I do have Brood Bonnie, which is a fantastic ground resistance. It can sponge earthquakes for days, but having an immunity and something potentially with Defog was what I was looking for next. Um, and initially I was leading towards Drift Blim since it has Defog, Strength Sap, it's a ghost type spin blocker which is pretty good for tinglu hazards and stuff but i found one pokemon that could do so much more 
<laughs> for my ninth pick in the draft, I got Oracorio, the Quiver Dancing Menace. And with Oracorio, I have access to all of the forms, so I can bring whichever one I want for each week. Now, by no means is this a top tier Pokemon, but some of the things that really appealed to me were the fact that this Pokemon is naturally faster than Great Tusk. Also having the flexibility to choose if I want to bring the Fire Flying, Electric Flying, Ghost Flying, and Psychic Flying forms, whichever one I want to bring. It's kind of nice because some forms are just better than others in against certain draft teams, and I mean, with the Quiver Dance option, it just becomes extremely dangerous. Also, I did a bulk comparison between Oracorio and Drifblim, and I found that Oracorio's bulk is only marginally less, which is kind of wild, because if you look at Drifblim's base HP stat, it's really, really deceptive to see that, uh, you know, HP stat, it, it, I mean, his bulk is not the best overall. So seeing Oracorio kind of be able to tank similar hits, it, it's pretty cool. Now, only two picks left in the draft to get 11 Pokemon. And then at this point, I realized in the draft, I had quite a few points to burn. And you know me, as the Heat Lord, it's Heat all the way. For my 10th pick in the draft, I got something so fire in Ledge. Some weeks I can run it with Flash Fire, others with Weak Armor. I mean, this Pokemon is extremely dangerous on a Sun team. Just having that Fire immunity is so nice when I'm powering up Fire moves in the Sun, just all around. It's also a nice Spin Blocker for Ting Lu, similar to Oracorio Ghost form, but more consistent, I feel. This pick was, you know, either between Serilage or Arm Rouge, because both of them were available at the time of me picking this slot, but I had to go with Serilage. It looks way cooler, and I, I like it more for the team in particular, with the added Shadow Sneak priority. A lot of interesting sets can be run with it too. I can think of a, a few good sets that I can run, and a bunch more Heat ones. And now, it's that point in time where I reveal the last and final pick of my draft. I knew this pick was not going to get taken, because... The only person that it really benefits is myself. The pick that solves all my speed issues and really rounds out the team's heat because I am looking to have some real fun this season. My 11th pick of the draft is none other than Scovillain. Best chlorophyll user in the game right now in my opinion. I have a lot of fire on this team and Scovillain gives it that extra kick. Really strong attack and special attack stats so there's potential to go physical, special or even mixed with this thing. Interesting utility options as well. Can't use Moody though, of course. It is banned, but Chlorophyll is the way that I'll be running this Pokemon. And that is my draft for the fun and heat route. What better way than making a Sun team? Something I've never done in draft before. Hope you all enjoyed it. On paper, it looks like it's going to be really fun, but I'm hoping it works out. Everything is being done a week in advance. So by the time this video goes up, I'll be getting ready to play my week one game tonight. So... Um, which goes up next weekend, so you'll have some extra content to look forward to alongside my next showdown video that I gotta record. Of course, I am still sick, have to play this game, so hopefully my brain will work the way it should. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be fun diving back into draft. It's been a while, and I probably will be a little rusty, but expect some fun sets and heat. Fun and heat is the theme of the season, so I'm looking forward to hearing from you all in the comments, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.